what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your true love course, the Skyrender. And today we're going up against Joe from Culmination Media. Yeah, I think you guys know exactly who this guy is. And, not, and if you aren't knowing who this guy is, then make sure to check him out. And I'm going to leave a link down below for that very reason. I've been a big fan of this guy since June last year. And I've become a fan in the same... Or for the same reason, really, that I play myself. He brings a lot of unconventional sets to the Wi-Fi battles, and he's really one of those people that are... Had he played, you know, the standard set, he would have come really far in tournaments and stuff like that, but that's the thing. It is that he gets it. He gets the metagame and wanna try stuff out to evolve it, you know, to challenge the people that are bragging about their strength and, you know, putting them on the ground, really. He got a lot. He has a good game idea, and I respect players like this because they they inspire people to do better and to think outside the box. And this was definitely one of those guys that I can kind of you know just pinpoint that this 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 thing this guy did. And I can see his sets from time to time on Wi-Fi battles. And um, yeah, you respect for that very reason. And he's like I said, he's very smart. And knowing that going into this battle, I knew that I had to think outside the box to have honest chance against it to be honest. So anyway, looking at his team here, we got Sulk, Claydol, Honedge, Quillfish, Type Lotion, and Cryogenol. I myself is bringing Dedene, Go-Go, Type Lotions, myself, Waylord, Unfessant, and uh, Sandslash. And really here, my opponent's core is much more defensively built than specially oriented, and um, I am actually not having that many special attackers, so... I going with this in mind, I felt a little stressed out because I have four physical attackers and I felt like they aren't going to bring their A game. So I straight off the bat I really just gonna bring their name and hoping that I can surprise him, but it's being you know choice abandoned and whatnot, and hoping that it gets me enough momentum to kinda work itself out in the long run. And of course both our special sweepers are and I can't really stress this enough, it is the type lotions. So that kind of means that the one that keeps the type lotions last is probably gonna win this stall out because I don't have that specially defensive team and as defensively go, not that well too. I guess Sandslash is the obvious wall here, but besides that, my Waylord is my... Well, it is my special defensive wall and I wonder if it can work in a one to get type lotion. So... Yeah, like I said, just gonna go with DNA, hoping to hit something, and then see if I can actually work things out. So, anyway, let's go. And I really like this first turn, because we fought both long and hard before doing what we did here. Um, I basically waited 60 seconds before doing the decision, and he probably waited 80. But he decided to go for the hidden power ground, actually. And I do live this, and he probably thought that, you know, I'm specially oriented that he can tank a hit if I decide to do so, but no, I am choice banded and I do take out this Cryogonal, which is extremely important because that means that my Sand Slash can come in freely, plus his Rapid Spinner is gone, but yeah, Claydol is here and uh, I was thinking, you know, I can go to Hank the Tank, the Waylord, and uh, basically hoping to do some damage, I decided to go for a Body Slam instead of a Waterfall because he still had a Quillfish in. And Quillfish is, um, well, it is kind of intimidating to be honest. So, not showing Mold Breaker here. I do suspect this is, of course, a sturdy set. And Body Slam gets a crit. And that is his great reel, to be honest, because that puts his Sork in death range. But I don't, and I mean don't, want to um, get anything knocked off or take a close combat for that reason alone. So, I decided to sack off my Dead A, and then I go, go to my Sand Slash. And I decided to do so to try to thread him out, really, and I was really sure that he was going to preserve this Sork. But thinking about it, his Sork is not a major player this game. He's going to go for knockoff, and I myself went for knockoff. And I should definitely, you know, I should have thought about this. I really, really misplayed here, and Jim basically knocking off his item means that he can switch to Ice Punch. So, uh, yeah. That, that's too bad. That is too bad. I, I'm losing on my Rapid Spinner before I even get to spin anything and his rocks are here to stay. Which is awful because I still have two fly, flying types. No, 
one flying type and one type that is fire. So I have two that's weak to self rocks, and th this won't do. It really won't do. So I'm gonna go into my Alavista, which is my type lotion. Of course, suspecting him to be locked in that hidden power grass. So I decided to go in for my own hidden power, expecting the quillfish, and no. Uh, and of course, he'd be levitated. Now I know exactly what type my hidden power is, which is awful. So I'm gonna go for a solar beam here. This set is basically like my Moltres set. That is that I see, you know, the utility of having at least some counteractive move that can take out whatever is in front of me. So uh, boosting it with Power Herb basically means that I at least get one good grass hit. But Quillfish is gonna take this, and actually fairly well, to be honest. And um, I saw no reason. I, I could risk it and go for Hidden Power Ground and take it out. But I really didn't want to risk it. So I went to my Go Go to Fagel. And um, yeah, I'm, I am actually specially oriented here. And it's not the physical set. It's even probably predicting me here to go for a Bull Cup or Elite Seed, actually. So we went for a Taunt. But um, yeah, you know, I went for Attack. I went for uh, Giga Drain here, and um, it will show to be enough to take out this Quillfish. And it only does so because Quillfish does lack in a special defensive uh, department. But as far as defensive go, it is quite formidable. So I've probably done the same play, expecting that I was uh, offensively heavy and was gonna go for Earthquake at best. So anyway, it's gonna go with the Roman, and it feels really, really like he can't risk this. He needs to go for Eruption. So I'm just gonna go to my Alvesta and take that flash fire really. And um, yeah, I know he's locked in. I know this. So I decided to go for hit a power ground again because I'm thinking that oh his switch is so predictable. Yeah, it is. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame. Oh no, shame on uh, you know the real. Shame on me is what I'm getting at. Uh, and you know, being boosted flash fire lava plume, that did nothing. I was in awe by this. How? How is it tanking this so well? Claydol monster. Monster. Help. So, anyway, I gotta go to Hank the Tank, and um, I'm just gonna go for Waterfall. I feel pretty, you know, confident that I can take this out with one Waterfall because that is a special defensive beast. So I'm gonna go for a waterfall, and uh, he didn't die. It didn't die. He's still going. He still has the eyes on me, and I. Wow. Wow. Why? How? <laughs> it is beyond me how it lives. And I get a specially defensive drop here, and that is gonna be very crucial because Waylord is not that defensive, and especially not in the special defensive department. So. This is gonna be one of those very, very tough moments. We both fought about this long and hard. I knew he packs the hidden power grass, and basically what happens here was that he decided to go for the eruption anyway, and the bigger question is, can I take this eruption? I actually waited for 70 seconds before I decided to stay in, and he still were undecided to this point. And he went for Eruption because it is the safest play actually, and uh, really, you know, the base should be enough to take me out. But Assaultfest is pulling through, Waylord clings on for their life in this Eruption of Flames and coming through, going for the Waterfall. And, you know, I was so surprised I lived this. Had he gone for the Hidden Power Water, uh, or Hidden Power Grass, that would have taken me out. So anyway, Waylord picking up the type lotion here, which is gonna go down. And the only pokes I got left now is the Honage. And um, basically we got this in the bag. Hopefully, uh, my Amphesson can actually hit can't hit this thing. So I just went for an EQ, and he's actually going for a Sword Stance, which is not a bad play actually. I think that's probably was the correct one to do. Um, because my Gogoth was special and oriented at least. So I went for Shadow Sneak and of course it's gonna take me out. There is no physical damage I can take. And my last Pokemon is gonna come out, or rather the last matchup here is the Gogoth against this uh, Honage. And um, yeah, Surf is 
definitely going to be enough and going to take out this Hone Edge. So, yo, Colmage Miner, GG man, GG, wow, what a battle. It definitely, it, you know, it was a 20 turn battle, but we battled for roughly half an hour. So, it was extremely tough for the both of us. We were both struggling in this battle very badly. So, yeah, looking back at this battle, you know, we both had a lot of fun, and um, really, that play made with the Type Lotion really was very decisive. Looking back at it, had it taken out my Waylord, which seems very likely, um, my only place I would have gone left with was Stun Pheasant and the um, Go Goat. And Pheasant couldn't hurt the opponent whatsoever, and my Go Goat could not outspeed a full HP Type Lotion. So, thinking about that, it's very possible that he would have won if um, he actually went for that hidden power grass. But at the same time, it, we both, like I said, had a lot of fun this battle. And the important stuff was that actually we got showcased our team and you know getting around and sh sh really, really bringing our A game. I knew that I needed to bring so much weird stuff as possible to have an honest chance against a guy like this because, like I said, he's a smart player. He does get the meta game. You can't play the safe plays against a player like this because you will lose and you will lose fast. So I knew that my best way of trying to at least, you know, getting some momentum out of this battle was to do well use some weird Pokemons and um, me coming on top. You know, it's it's just a judgment call to be honest. He is just as worried as I were for winning this battle, and I really believe that the end result of this battle reflects just that. that there were not many more plays we had left against one another, and that was really, really decisive. So like I said, Joe, GG, it was an honor to battle you, to be honest. It was a very, very fun time. And um, for you guys who've been watching, you know, make sure to leave a like and check Culmination Media if you haven't that done that before. But like I said, he is great. So, anyway, guys, remember the sky is limit. So, good guys, and take care, right? Bye.